So going over some items for success for basic incubation. I always love having a pen light. I like to use this. This can, you can find it, you know, on Amazon, anything like that, but actually cool. It has a handy dandy distance here where you can actually see how wide the distance of the light is. And I'll show you this later, but you can actually put this up against the egg, careful not to touch it, but you can actually see inside. And this helps throughout the whole time of development, allowing for you to check for vessels and also like embryo development within the eggs. So that's pretty cool. Next, I'll like to show one of the containers. I just like to use, try to keep it clean and you know, don't do anything to it, but microwave safe doesn't really matter, but just the generic Tupperware container. Um, I like these because they're kind of just the right height and long to where I can lay my eggs out and using it this way. I don't put any holes in mine, so I'll show you the strategy of keeping proper moisture for collar lizard eggs, but this is generally one of the ones I use and I get them in bulk around 20 to 25 in the package. And you know, generally lasts me around a year or whatever I'm using. If I have eggs that are similar, I might label the top telling me exactly the date and certain things like that. I'm particular to using vermiculite. I like using generally coarse grade, but this is professional grade and I haven't had any issues with it. Generally, this holds the moisture and this is the main substrate I use. And I also do actually use lava rock underneath. So generally, I'll show you uh, in a little bit how I generally get this wet, wash it down, leave it on the bottom, and then fill it in with the vermiculite to have the perfect environment for humidity and moisture for while the eggs develop. Now here I have one of my little giant styrofoam incubators. I actually like these because these actually have a digital sensor on top and this allows me to program adjust based on the old uh, hand crank and knob temperature ones were less reliable where I would keep a thermometer grade inside but again made in America or the United States you can find these at Tractor Spy I don't really remember how much the price is but around like 45 to 50 dollars so these are actually relatively in a great um, price range for whenever you need them and keeps the temperature perfect. It does have a humidity gauge, but again, I use containers without holes to maintain my own proper humidity. But again, this is a little giant styrofoam incubator, and this is generally what I like to use here at Colorful. Now going in, you can actually see I have some eggs already in here, and I have some Dickersone and Lightning Yellow New Mexico eggs currently link incubating, and I also keep some water in here just in case, just to keep it at incubation temperature in case I need to add any more humidity if something's not going well. But if you can see, all these eggs are nice and plump and full, and some of them do get some discoloring, but that's generally what they came into contact as they were laid in the nest box, but I don't tend to see too many issues there, and I can show you a little bit later, but I can show you how to pen light and properly do this, but generally what I also do is I keep these closed, but over time, as you can probably understand, that the air inside kind of gets stale, so I actually do every 24 hours, I will actually crack open these lids and let fresh air get inside. And now generally try to keep it to where I don't move the eggs, but let some fresh air in. You can actually feel the humidity come out a little bit. And this is another reason why I do keep the water there at a proper temperature, because when you do this, you are letting some moisture out. I tend to like waft with my hand, get some fresh air and then be quick with it and just put the lid back on. And this is another way that I do in the daily routine just to make sure that the eggs stay healthy. And this prevents any mold or other things that may go bad and hurt the eggs in the long run. Now how to properly set up the incubation containers. Um, I generally again use professional grade or coarse grade vermiculite and my little secret is the red lava rocks to help keep moisture on the bottom. I like to use filtered or 
purified water or also the bottled water like I showed earlier in the incubation container and then the vermiculite here. And I actually weighed these out because I like to do an equal weight or actually slightly more water to vermiculite. But I can also show you another good way of how I can tell if you have the proper temperature and moisture. So starting off, I like to take the lava rocks and just gently pour in a small layer. Again, these help hold moisture in the bottom. I don't think these come in contact with the eggs, but I will do this later. You see how there's some powder there? This is where I'll actually take some of the water pour them down over. And again, I'm not going to be using this water in here. It's just to wash off some of the powder and rocks. I'll take it and I'll pour out the water. Now that I've poured the water out of the lava rocks, but they, you can see they're still moist, I'll add my vermiculite. This way, I try to lay it down. Again, equal weights. So it generally helps if you have a gram scale weighing your collared lizards or using that for, say, maybe food if you're one of those meal preppers that likes weighing out their foods. I put the vermiculite in that I've pre-weighed. I'll give it a little shake just to try and get it down over. I poured a little bit too much on that one side. But putting the vermiculite down and then I'll take the water. And generally what I do is I'll pour the water in, try to make it cover most of the areas. You can see I actually uncovered some of the rocks, but I'll put my water in for the weight that I needed. And then what I like to do is actually mix around. Once I've mixed it around, I try to get all the dry vermiculite in contact with the water. And then I'll slowly, gently pat it down. Again, I've washed my hands before I did this. You can use sterile gloves, but that's a little overdue um, and not really needed and generally pat down. But one thing I do like to do, so you take the vermiculite, it shouldn't be dripping water out of your hands, but when you do squeeze it, it's kind of hard, but you saw a little drip there at the end. You do want the water to gently drip out, but again, when you pick it up, it shouldn't be pouring out. That's a good range of telling if your vermiculite is the right moisture. And again, once I do get eggs, I actually like to take my thumb. I have a pretty big thumb, but I push down in to make an indentation. And this actually allows a nice little spot to put the egg down in there. And then sometimes I will actually push up on the edges because what you want to do is make a comfortable area where the egg can sit and it also won't roll in case anything does come in contact because collared lizard eggs cannot be moved or rolled around once they're incubating different than like eggs. So also make sure when you get an incubator, don't get one that rolls the eggs for you. That is very important. 